Hello, everybody, and I'm very excited. We're back today, and we have Roger Connect today. He is the president of the Universal Accountant School, and he's here today to talk about numbers, and he's going to tell you what he means by that. I'm really excited. I want you guys to know that he has his own podcast on our channel, so check him out, Roger Connect, and he has some great episodes that talks about numbers, accounting, things that are related to accounting, business um, ideas and strategies and tools that you could use to apply to your own business and really excel in the area of your industry. So Roger, tell everybody a little about yourself, what you do, and what exactly are you going to be talking about when you say numbers? Well, what I do is I run Universal Accounting School. Uh, It's basically for accounting professionals, principally where we help them start and build accounting businesses. And at the same time, we work with individuals as it relates to skill training. So helping them get the, the, let's say, the positions, the employment that they would like. We kind of refer to it as getting them paid what they're worth. And it's in that context that we offer a variety of training, certifications, programs, just a, a pool of a pool or resource of things to assist them in their career advancements. As to numbers, what we're going to be talking about today is essentially what it takes for a business to be successful. And one of the things is clearly numbers. So we're going to dive into that in a number of ways. Wow. You know, I'd love love to know what exactly, how do you become successful when it comes to numbers and it comes to business? What exactly do you need to put in priority to in order to have a successful business? Well, one of the things that I have found to be very important as I've done my business coaching is first is those individuals who, first of all, recognize the value or importance of numbers, start to use those as they make business decisions. And one of the key things to realize is this cliche statement that says accounting is the language of business. It's to recognize that they're just not there as these side things that you just do once a year. It's this necessary evil that you have to deal with to be in business. No, these are essential things that you can use to purposely run run your business, more intelligently run your business if you simply listen to what the company is telling you. And it's through the accounting information that it's providing that that feedback that you need to be aware of. What are some of the things that people should look for when it comes to um, looking at the accounting numbers? You know, what are some things that people sometimes may overlook but are really important, like maybe the top priorities of what they need to really um, open their eyes to and really look at in order to start getting their priorities in line and to and to grow a, a strong business foundation so they can it could sell. The first thing I would suggest is that you can see numbers as removing the emotion from business. One of the things that I feel is very, very important is once you've established in your business model certain numeric representations of what success is defined as, you have these standards, you can manage towards them. It's either good, bad, it's just basically a way of looking at did I do what was expected as it relates to being profitable? So for example, if I know that I need so many sales in order to be profitable, I expect that from those sales, I'll get so much revenue. So I know what my revenue expectations are to cover my operating expenses, to be profitable, to pay me what I'm worth. Well, I can backwards engineer that and I can step even outside of the accounting and get to some essential numbers that exist in the business. And I'll illustrate that by the following. If I know that I need $10,000 a month in revenue so as to cover my costs, pay my bills, pay me what I'm worth. The $10,000 a month just simply gets reverse engineered to say, well, in order to provide that product or service, let's say my COGS, the cost of doing business happen to be $2,000. Well, that's 2,000 leaving eight. So I've got $8,000 to pay the bills. Well, if I'm going to pay myself, let's say 5,000. Well, I've got 3,000 to now pay the bills that I have, such as rent or maybe some other services, perhaps such as advertising. You're going to quickly realize, was that $10,000 enough? Should it have been 20, 50, 100? Should it have been a million? And it doesn't matter what the number is. It doesn't matter whether you're a solo operator running running a business as a solopreneur, or if you're a large entity and organization, that number is what it is. And so as you backwards engineer it, you're going to quickly realize that there are what are called leading and lagging indicators. And the leading indicators are just as they would represent. Those things that matter first and foremost, either you're doing what is essential to the success of your business or or you are not. So I always begin with the leading indicators. I like that. I like that a lot. And when people are establishing their numbers, you know, what's a great way to formulate it so people could start to really see what's going on in their business? 
Well, the leading indicators help us recognize what do I need to be doing on a day-to-day basis? If I do these key things, these essential things and hit these metrics, I can trust that everything else will follow. If, for example, I know my leading indicators that I need to have, say, 100 new leads on a daily basis for me and my sales team, I need to focus on did I or didn't I get the 100 leads I need today? Because I know of the 100 leads, so many of them are going to be qualified. Of those qualified leads, I know that I'm going to end up with so many that are going to convert. Of those that convert, I know what my average revenue per sale is. I mean, that, these are the key things, and they come long before the accounting information is actually produced. So these le- leading indicators can be seen on an hourly basis, on a daily basis. And I can even say the same thing from a production standpoint. When you're running a business, if you have the inventory needed to assemble the product or good, it's no surprise whether or not you actually produce on a daily basis, an hourly basis, what you intended to. If you don't have the parts in stock as part of the inventory, there is no surprise. Surprise If you don't have the hours, the people showing up to do the work, there's no surprise that things are not getting done. And so I always start with those leading indicators to determine, am I on the path towards success? And I have to know what those numbers are in order to manage or run the business according to the numbers. What are some of the common mistakes that you see business owners do that really hurt their businesses? not understanding what those leading indicators are. When you run a business, you should have a business model, just this hypothetical, I've done it on a pro forma, an Excel spreadsheet, where I've actually created this fictitious business that if I'm doing these certain things, this is going to be the end result, the output, the profit, let's say. And I should be able to manipulate those numbers and say, well, if I just got a little bit better at the, let's say marketing, if I got a little bit better at the sales, if I got a little bit better at the production, if I did this 10% better, 5% better, it should trickle through the entire process and end up with either revenue or profit. And these are the things that I'm looking for. Can I cut my costs, for example, as it relates to, let's say, the payroll? Can I cut my costs as it relates to my professional services or my marketing uh, expenses? Each of these things are things that I should be tweaking with and working towards. And as I know and understand my business model, I can go back now and work in the business as well as on the business. I have that in idea of I'm going to be here effective and productive with my time on in the sense I'm going to be strategic and very focused on what I'm doing. It really addresses both the strategic and tactical sides of running the company. I like that. I like that a lot. You know, I, I think a lot of times people, you know, overlook their book when it comes to bookkeeping and accounting. Um, they kind of, you know, they pay attention when it comes to, you know, um, when it comes to time to do our taxes and, you know, stuff like that. And a lot of times, you know, people don't look at it on a co- consistent basis. They might look at it maybe on a monthly basis. But I think, you know, it sounds to me like a monthly basis isn't good enough. You really have to. This is something you really have to keep track of either day to day or week to week, you really have to, and and compare it, it seems like also, you know, what did I do last week? You know, what did I do this week? Why are my numbers better last week than they are this week? You know, and, and, you know, something like that seems like that would be something that you would suggest. What do you think? Well, what you're bringing up is I think just the innate nature nature of an entrepreneur. We are oftentimes very competitive and oftentimes it's with ourselves. And so what we're doing is we're taking, here's what I did last week, last, last month. Am I doing any better? Did I get more proficient at something? Am I more efficient at something? And all of a sudden what happens is you start using the numbers to say, well, last Monday I did 10. Can I do 10 this Monday? Last month I did 300. Can I do 300 again this month? You start to, when you have the numbers by measuring them, you start to hold yourself accountable. And when you're measuring the numbers, that that accountability causes things to improve. They'll increase. That is very important because if you weren't measuring, you have no gauge upon which to actually then determine whether or not things are working. So that let me take this and transition then from the leading indicators to the lagging indica- indicators, which you brought up. One of them is the accounting information, the financial reports. There's no surprise if you're watching the leading indicators, what's happening at the end of the day. And so when you're looking at the accounting information, now we're really seeing what actually happened. I've got some ideas because I've been watching the numbers, but here's how it really plays out as it, as it relates to the financial obligations I have, the marketing, did it make the sales? Did it make the revenue? Can I pay the bills? Is there money left over? Well, that's all found in the accounting information, whether it's the balance sheet, the profit and loss statement, or the cash flow statements. And how you use these is going to be very critical as to the decisions you're making for tomorrow, for the next month, 
the planning? Do you have the monies that you need for the growth, hiring a new employee, buying another machine, uh, maybe growing and, and uh, getting a new location? These types of things are all financially based. And if you're watching the numbers, you can be more strategic than about your plans. But where I want to really go with this is the fact that when you're measuring these numbers, you're tracking them, you're holding yourself accountable, things will improve. And that's the value of watching the numbers. Not only do the accounting numbers actually tell a story of what's happening, one which you're living and you're able to validate, validate them, but now you can use them to improve what's, what you're experiencing. I like that. I like that a lot. I, th I think it's really important to really understand where you're going. And also, I, I think that also it, it seems like also you could it helps you understand what is actually making you money and what's not making you money and where, you know, what things you probably should cut out and what things you, or you don't have to invest as much money maybe that you are investing because your return isn't as great as you anticipated it. And I think sometimes it's hard for a lot of people too. That's why I think it's so important to have an accountant, you know, and, and work with your accountant on a, on a consistent basis because you can't run a business and, you know, look at your accountant and then, you know, work on your inventory and then work on your sales. And then, you know, it's, it's when you wear too many hats, it's, it's, I think some things get lost in the, in the crowd and it's just, it's, it's just things start to fall and mistakes are made. Yeah. One of the things that you're illustrating there is the fact that when running a business, one of the first things that's outsourced is accounting. It's the first realization of all the things that I'm needing to do where I'm outside of my expertise, that I'm picking up the pieces. It's accounting that I really need to now have an expert come in. It's where you first of all recognize of all the things that I'm willing to do, this is something I need an expert to assist with because it really hinges the success of the business on these numbers. And what we're able to do is get this outside perspective as it relates to the financials. Is this really working? Is this business model uh, effective and profitable? So what I'd like to do is transition then from this mindset of using the numbers, watching the numbers, tracking the numbers and being competitive with them to now give you an analogy so that you can see how it's effective because it's more than just having money in the bank. And I know that that's a viable thing. It's cash flow. Do I have the money to pay the bills? But let's talk about now just having the business effectively being productive. And are we doing better month over month, quarter over quarter? quarter, year over year. So the first thing I want to illustrate is the fact that you can be competitive with yourself by having these accounting reports and actually looking at this month compared to last month and really see how they compare. What's changed? What's different? What percentages, what ratios are evolving? What does this quarter compared to last quarter look like? What does this quarter compared to the same quarter last year? What does year to date this year look like year to date last year? And when you look at it this way, what happens is you start to have things stand out. Here's what's changing. My cost of goods have, have gone up because of inflation. My payroll, because I've given people raises, is changing. I need to actually raise prices because of these differences. Um, okay. You can look at things that relate to the cost. You know, my rent went up. Uh, my cost with regards to UPS, FedEx, yeah, USPS, those have changed. When you get notifications of annual increases, you've got to realize that they're going to kind of meticulate or uh, they're going to triculate through the business. We need to now take that and apply it to our price changing. So all of a sudden you can start seeing how there's this cause and effect going on in the business. And really it's just kind of like weight loss, or it's maybe like playing golf. You're competing against yourself. Did I lose weight this month? Am I weighing less than I did the previous month? Did I weigh less today than I did the same time last year? It's same as golf. You know, I used to have this handicap. I used to play this this certain way. Am I getting worse? Am I getting better? That's all great, but it's all reflective. It's basically you comparing yourself against you. What I want to do is encourage us to go to the next level, which is called benchmarking, where you compare yourself to your competitors. Mm -hmm. I like that. Now, when you do compare yourself to your competitors, I think that's very valuable because a lot of times, you know, if you if you look at your competitors and you see how they're doing, you sometimes you can you really see how are they marketing? How are they, you know, where are they putting all their effort in? You know, do I see are they marketing a lot? Where are they marketing to? You know, are they spending a lot of money here? You know, when you start to investigate the other companies and you start to really dive deep into what they're doing, especially if they're doing really well, you could see, you know, well, you know what? I'm lacking in that area. Maybe if I improve in this area, my numbers will go up or I'll, I'll get more cons consumers and, and then I'll be able to sell products in that area. 
And I think, I think, you know, and that's what you really see, you know, if you really look at it, you see all the competitors, you know, they're really you know, spying on each other, then they do things and they, they change it up a little bit, but they're all, they're all watching each other and they're all seeing, okay, you know, how is this person excelling? Where are they, where are their numbers going? Where is, where is their money being invested? How are they, how are they, you know, how are they marketing themselves? And they look at all the different aspects of a business and then they try to compare themselves and also, it also helps them, I think, too, when it comes to sales, because then, you know, they, you know, some companies tend to underscale themselves, you know, and that's where a problem comes in, too. And then some people overprice themselves. They think they're worth more, way more than what they actually are. And that could hurt a company also because they're not going to get as many sales. So I think comparison of your competitors are, are really important. You know, what are your thoughts about that? Well, I think it's critical, especially for a business owner. Now realize I'm going to assume that many business owners, entrepreneurs are very competitive, which is to say, we like to do things well, and we like to do them very successfully. Well, how does that look? Well, up to now, what we've been talking about with regards to financials is really comparing ourselves to our past selves and to our best selves as it relates to the business model. Those are two great assessments to make because I know what I want. That's my pro forma. That's my business model. How well am I meeting budget or forecast? Am I accurate with regards to what I'm doing? How am I performing over the past with myself? I used to weigh this much. I used to perform this way. Am I still that good or am I getting better? But now let's take it and go to the to the competition. And this is where I think it really gets interesting. Now, when I have this conversation with my clients, so often one of the first things that comes up is, yes, these, these are my competitors, but I'm different. Well, we're all different. Let's first of all recognize that. We're all unique, and I get that. Just like your mother would tell you, you are special, and that's fine. But at the end of the day, you are, in essence, the same as someone else. I'm a, I'm a male. I'm 53. I'm actually, today is my birthday. It's 50, I'm 54. There you go. So I'm 54. Well, how do I compare to other people my age, my size, my, my, you know, gender, all these things. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out that there is a norm. And statistically, I'm not going to be like somebody that's 70 and I'm not going to be like somebody that's 30. I need to be some like somebody that's in my fifties and I'm either on average better than or worse than. Well, the same applies in business. If in my industry, I'm able to compare myself to my competitors, I can see how much of their business is spent on marketing and sales and payroll. I can see what's happening as it relates to their profit market margins? And how's my business performing as it relates to that industry norm? And that's called benchmarking. Benchmarking is where you take your, your financial reports, your P&L, your balance sheet, and using that information, you take and with your NAIC, NAICS code, run a benchmark report. And it essentially says, here's how your company, your, your NAICS code performs and how your business is similar or dissimilar from what the others are doing. And it's fascinating because yes, at the end of the day, I can look in the mirror and I can see how I look compared to pictures of last year, 10 years ago, but it's nice to actually now see how do I compare to others who are just like me? And it's like going to a high school reunion. You walk in, you're like, oh my heavens, everybody's aged so much. What's changed? Look at yeah. this. This is ridiculous. Well, Either you feel really good about what's happened to you over the last few years, or you're like, I've got to change things up. I've got to lose some weight. I've got to exercise some more. And we don't know what that's going to be for everybody, but we know what it is for us. And when you're a competitive entrepreneur, these numbers in your business can help you make the tweaks, the changes you need to be more and more successful, more and more profitable. I like that. I like that a lot. I think it's really important that you can, you know, you really compare yourself to your, your other businesses and you do the benchmark theory that you, you know, you were explaining, you know, I use theory, but I really, I don't think that's the proper word, but um, you know, I, I think, I think it's really important to understand what your competitors are doing and you know, how they're, you know, where in their business are they shining and where they're not and, and to understand, you know, what's going on and what's making them who they are today. And I, I think that's a really important strategy that really helps a business grow. Because if you go in blinded and you don't really look at what your competitors do and, and how they're, you know, especially the ones that are excelling and, you know, what are they doing that I'm not doing, you know, um, that, you know, that could really make you or break you. Because it's not, a lot of times what I see is a lot of people, a lot of entrepreneurs, they get, they've been in the business so long that they get stuck in the old ways. And they're not really looking at what their competitors today are doing. They're still doing what they did 10 years ago. 
And that's a problem that I see, you know, reoccurring a lot, you know, with, you know, people who've been in the business a very long time, they just get stuck in their ways. It worked for them. So they keep on doing it, but, and then it, they, they're starting to get stagnant in their business. Uh, they're starting to lose money and it still hasn't clicked. They haven't clicked the both two, two together. And I don't know if it's because they're stubborn or if it's just not an area where they're, um, well-versed in. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you've seen that yourself working with so many clients. Oh, I have. I've seen it time and time again. First of all, the older clients, they're set in their ways, you know, it used to work, therefore it must continue work, uh, working. And one of the things that they get sucked into is because it worked, there's no need to change. You know, this is what I'm good at. And so they're, they're uncomfortable admitting this is new and unfamiliar. Therefore I need help. And so for a business to thrive and be successful, it has to be willing to try new things, test new things. And I would just basically say it applies to every industry and profession. You've got to realize that in the last number of years, whether it relates to the marketing, how you market your business sales, how you're selling today, if it's regarding to production, how you pro produce or deliver your product or service, I would dare say everyone listening to this show 10 years ago either wasn't doing it the way you're doing it or it, or you weren't in business 10 years ago. You're that new. And so my point is, is we have to be open to change. We have to be willing as leaders of our business to have the vision to say, how are we going to take what we're doing now and make it better? And that's one of the essential parts of business. And in accounting, it's going to help you identify where those leaks are, where th things are breaking, where it once worked and it no longer is. I'll give you a great example. One of the things that we're struggling with in our company is the changes and evolutions that we're seeing as it relates to our marketing. There were things that used to work effectively from a marketing point of view that was very cost effective for us. And it's broken. My cost for advertising has doubled in 2024. Well, that's a broken thing. It's destroying my profit margin. You know, I, I have to adapt. And that ad adaptation is testing. That adaptation is investing in new services to help with, re with regards to marketing. And these are things that I'm proactively doing because my leading indicators are showing that there are problems in the process. So these are things that I have to proactively deal with. My employees aren't going to address the problem. They're not going to solve it. They're going to probably highlight the problem and bring it to my attention. But they're too busy scrambling to try and take care of what they're responsible for on a daily basis that I need to be looking forward and finding what are we going to do to change and adapt. And only because I'm looking at the numbers on a regular basis am I able to see things are changing. And when I compare, let's say, July to January, when I compare May to January, when I compare 24 to 23, you can clearly see things are changing. And that's just one example of things that have happened. We're a school. And as a school, we originally began in 1979 offering classroom instruction. Classroom instruction was very common. The internet did not exist in 1979. So all of a sudden, what we have today is we've closed all of our campuses. All of our training is done online. It's all been provided as video instruction that you can do independently. This is fascinating because if we did not change and adapt, we would be extinct. And so the numbers are essential. They're able to help us see what's happening rather than just you know, kind of winging it, if you will, but also because of the wisdom we have in the business, they also help confirm what we're starting to feel or sense. They're proof of what we're experiencing. And that's one of the things that I think is very helpful. But this is, I think, a great point to transition in, as to what accounting is for all these numbers. So I think we have to now take these theories that I've been sharing, the ideas of leading lagging indicators, watching the numbers and see how they practically play out. Yes, definitely. And I, I think those are really good strategies. Now, once you, you started to look at all these strategies, you start looking at the numbers, you start analyzing, you start seeing where your weaknesses are, you start seeing where your strengths are, you start to really compare yourself to your competitors, you know, and then you start to see, wow, you know, they're, they're doing this, you know, a lot more than I am and so forth. And there, there's, it looks like they're spending more money in this area. And there are ways to find out, you know, where their money is going, where their money's not going. And, you know, and then you look, you compare it to what you're doing. And, and then once you compare it and, and you do the comparison, what would be the next step you, that you would probably do to help a business be successful? Because I've also seen businesses, you know, they look 
and they make they they jump right into a decision without really thinking it through. You know, they get very excited and they say, okay, they're doing this and this and this, and you know, they're really up on top and they're, you know, they're doing much better than X, Y, and Z. And then they jump in and they make these quick decisions without really thinking it through, maybe, you know, maybe looking at the numbers a little bit more and really, you know, looking at how much money are they bringing in? You know, can they afford this? Is it a really good idea? You know, because sometimes, you know, what they're, they might have more money to spend, you know, so they can do some of these things. And then other businesses say, well, it's working for them. You know what? We'll make our money back real quick. And they jump right into it and then they get burned. So, you know, what, what's your, your, your theory after, after you've really done the comparison? So, you know, because I'm sure you've seen that happen. Do you see like those impulsive decisions that, that, that businesses or entrepreneurs make? And then all of a sudden, you know, it, it, it kind of, it kind of fall in a hole from it. Oh, yes. I mean, we're very creative as entrepreneurs. And so I think one of the things that happens is we get these ideas, these inspirations. And honestly, I think they're one of the things that keeps us in business because we are willing to try and test and do new things. And so I in no way want to stifle that creativity. But you'll remember at the very beginning, I said that one of the values that the numbers bring is they remove the emotion away from the business. What we can do is go back to these accounting numbers and really try and then gauge what we're doing as it relates to our decisions and see, okay, how's this going to play out? So let me kind of illustrate how this would work. If you go back to the beginning, we were talking about leading in that lagging indicators. And the premise was, is that you've got a pro forma, a budget or forecast that you've created that's your business model that has all these numbers that say, basically, if I sell this and convert at this level, I mean, at this many sales, I'm going to then uh, have this kind of a closing rate generating this kind of revenue. My costs are going to be this. You've got your entire business model. If you've got your pro forma created and you have these ideas coming, you can then see, okay, how will these ideas that you're having impact the business model? And you can tweak it there and play with it and see, okay, is this something worth investing time and money in, or is it minuscule as to the needle that it's going to move? So this goes then to key performance indicators. If those numbers are ones that you can then manipulate, you can then play with how I should spend my time, where should I spend my money? Now, that then brings us to the leading and lagging indicators. This this whole idea is to come up with the standards that we can then watch the leading indicators. Am I doing what I say I need to be doing? Lagging indicators. Am I getting the results that I expected I would get? And ultimately the financial reports, when I look at them, is this being profitable? So all that's in place. We now have the financial reports to look at our history. So now we're comparing ourselves to ourselves. Am I getting better? And we go to that benchmarking level using our NAICS code. And with benchmarking, we then run a report and see how we compare to our industry. That all being said, it brings us into this whole idea of accounting. How does it play in and how do you then use these creative thoughts that you're saying, these inspirations we're, we're all experiencing? You're going to take those now and run those through the numbers and actually using that pro forma, see, can I fix or change how things I, how, how I'm doing business today to be better than what I am now? And that's really where you start to then get creative and see where the results will come out. Now, right. that being said, let me define the accounting roles and you'll see hopefully how these play into it. The role of the bookkeeper is to record your historical transactions and create these financial reports that you're using. Now, their role is to produce those reports accurately and timely so that we have this information in front of us to make intelligent decisions. The role of the accountant is to do what you're describing. Now, as a team, let's use this information to now understand what's happening in the business and interpret what it's saying. This is working. This isn't working. This needs to change. This should be better. These things are trending in the wrong direction. How do we change that trajectory? Yes. <laughs> If you're able to actually work with your accountant to then game plan what strategies you're going to implement in your business, you're now forward thinking as it relates to the company. So the bookkeeper is helping you stay current, recording everything, accurate information. The accountant is helping you analyze that information and use that to make forward thinking decisions. And then you work with a tax 
expert. The tax expert is perhaps one or two individuals. One's the strategist helping you now make decisions as it relates to tax mitigation, legally lowering your tax liability. And then the tax preparer is the one that's making sure that you're filing in a timely manner your tax liabilities. This is both state and federal and payroll. So as you're working with all of these individuals, you have a team of people meant to actually help you run your business intelligently and legally. Okay. I like that a lot. I think, you know, I think if people, you know, do these steps and they, they incorporate it into their, into their business, and they pay more attention because I think all businesses do do it. I, but how much, how much do they pay attention to these numbers? And that's the important thing. Now, you know, a lot of companies I see, they do the audit at the end of the month, you know, they're always auditing at the end of the month, you know, what would you suggest if you, a business really wants to thrive, how how much should they be paying attention to their numbers? Should they be looking at their numbers on a daily basis, a weekly basis, a monthly basis? You know what really makes a business thrive? Because if you really want to prosper, you really have to pay attention to those numbers. So what how how much attention should you really be paying attention to the numbers? Because like we were talking before, these these business owners, these entrepreneurs, they're all over the place because they're trying to do so many different things. And they're very creative. They're getting ideas in their head. But honestly, how much attention, how much energy do we put into these numbers? Well, it's going to range business to business, but I'm going to give you some ideas. I've worked with a company before where they literally worked at, looked at the numbers on 15-minute increments. Every 15 minutes, they were assessing, is the company on pace for what it needed to be producing? Or was it behind? Or was it ahead? Every 15 minutes, they were running the business. In my company, we're looking at it at a, on a daily basis. So you can go from 15 minutes to hours to half days to full days. Either way, you need to actually determine for your company at what interval is a comfortable interval, interval to assess, is there a need to, to tweak or change what's happening in the business? I'm able to, on a daily basis, each and every day assess, are we moving in the right direction or are we let's say tripping or stumbling on what needs to be done. And on a daily basis, I'm either with my management saying, we're doing well, keep it up, or this is out of whack. We need to address this and tweak this. We're doing it at that level. And some businesses may say weekly sufficient. Some may say monthly is, is adequate, but you have to understand looking at your KPIs, your key performance indicators, what are those leading numbers that you're going to watch? And when they start to deviate from that standard, at what point do you now drop everything and work on it so it gets back in line with what needs to take place. I can't go a day without my marketing working effectively. If I go one day with my marketing not working, my sales funnel not producing the leads that my sales team needs, my business will trip, flounder, and struggle. So on a daily basis, I'm sensitive to what's happening there. As it relates to weekly, weekly, I'm looking at numbers because daily it can go good, it can go bad, but over a week, I can't have a bad week. I can have a bad day, but not a bad week. And so that bad week is something that I really get sensitive to. Now, if that bad week is something going on, we have to double down that following week to make up that difference. I can't wait a month to try and recuperate. And so all these things are because of my business model. Well, your business model could be different. You could be having to make these same type of changes on an hourly basis, not a daily, or perhaps it's a monthly versus a weekly. But knowing your business and watching those KPIs, having those standards will help you understand what you need to be doing as it works or as it relates to working in the business versus right. on the business. And depending on the size of your company, you've got to be able to focus on, okay, what is your role? In my case, I don't get involved with the day-to-day -day activities of my business. I have employees that do that. So if wow. I'm ever now involved with the day-to-day -day things going on in the business, every everyone knows there's a problem because otherwise my attention would be elsewhere. I'm only here because there's something wrong at that day-to-day -day level. Right. No, I, I think that that's a great, you know, because people, people, you know, it's very important to look at your market and, you know, I say a lot of people um, struggle when they, when they, um, they're focusing, they're spending a lot of money on their marketing and they're not getting returns back, you know, and they're, they're, you know, they don't know if it's because of the, they're, they think they're, they're, they're almost positive. They're, they're focusing on the right audience, but something is not drawing them in. Something is not, not working. And, you know, so sometimes it's, you know, 
it's it's good to maybe even do a an alpha better I think too is where you you kind of split up your your money you know your budget what you have for marketing and maybe put a little bit in each area and see what the returns are and see where you're getting a you know a majority of your sales too you know what do you think about that idea I think it's a great idea. One of the things that we teach as it relates to marketing is what I call the rule of thumb principle. The rule of thumb says I need to have four proven marketing methods that I can dial, that I can tweak, that I can work with because I know they're effective and very cost effective. But there's this fourth one, or excuse me, this fifth one I'm testing. And there's always this test going on because it's inevitable. One of the four that are proven will eventually change, something will go on, something will happen, that it's not as effective as it once was. And I need to have something in the wings that I can replace it with. And then two, there's sometimes that that rule of thumb proves to be that the fifth thing I'm testing is better than any of the four I'm already doing. It's a new technology, a new style, a new approach that I wasn't doing before that I figured out. And now it's better than the four that I was doing. And so I can drop the least productive of those. And I can now focus on that fifth one. And now I can then adjust by another test. So yeah, you've got to always be on your game, testing, proving. You've got to, with that wisdom, have that sixth sense and the numbers validating what you're actually experiencing. But you're right, as it relates to marketing, it's a fickle business out there. What used to work as it related to say, uh, I used to do print advertising. Print's gone. Nobody looks at print any longer. I uh, used to do direct mail. Haven't had success with that in some some time, although I've recently tested it. Um, I've uh, gone to online marketing, clearly. Well, with regards to that, it used to have a lot of success with Meta. That's changed. It's not like what it once, once was five years ago. So these things, they do evolve. And unless you're staying on the top of your game and doing something differently and new, you're always going to be caught off guard. So let me just kind of summarize it this way. In our book, In the Black, there are nine principles to make a business profitable. And the very first thing in there is nothing happens until you make a sale. That's first and foremost. The second thing is cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. You've got to be focusing on what's happening with your money. It's all the accounts payable, receivables, and the correlations of those. Are the people who owe you money paying you? And are you able to manage the fees that are going out? Those are huge. Cash flow, cash flow, cash flow is very important. And then with regards to production, it's pouring on the communication, just making sure your customers are being communicated with. They're not in the dark. Your employees know what's happening, what's expected. You do those things on a day-to-day day basis, you're going to meet your objectives. And then there's the other six that we focus on. Those are key. Those relate to what I refer to as the three core accounting services that you should be expecting as it relates to the numbers you have. We began with the idea of accounting is the language of business. So how do you get that number? How do you get that information so you can intelligently run your decision, your business making intelligent business decisions. Well, it's very simple. You've got to work with a competent bookkeeper. You've got to work with a competent accountant. You've got to work with a competent tax strategist and a tax uh, competent tax preparer. All of those are then complemented with a proper CFO and advisor. You have those six roles met in your organization. You're going to be fine. And I address those in the book, Your Strategic Accountant. And I have to agree with you because once I started to really focus on the numbers and I started to work with my book, bookkeeper, my accountant, and I started to really, you know, you know, they had strategies that they wanted me to do. They had ways they want, you know, things that, you know, they, they wanted specific, you know, strategic, strategic plans, like, and, and they want everything organized and they wanted me to see the numbers. I really understood how my business was doing, where my business was lacking, where I needed to improve, where I needed to spend money, where I didn't need to spend money. And it changed the whole trajectory of my business and it helped my business grow tremendously. But in the beginning, when I first started my business, this is going back, you know, I just, you know, I was creative, that creative entrepreneur, but I didn't have that that business sense yet. But once I started to focus on business and I started focusing on the clients and the money and where the money was going and how much money was going out, how much money was go coming in, it changed everything. And, you know, focusing on numbers is really important and, and people do lack that. They spend so much time on one end, they forget about the numbers. And, you know, they look at the numbers at, the, you know, really at the end of the week when they have to pay payroll and the business and then and the, the bills are coming in and then they start to, you know, you know, if 
they start to, you know, small business owners will start to freak out. And then you'll have, you know, you know, middle business owners, sometimes they have a little bit of both, but, you know, you see a lot of successful businesses grow and start to thrive when they are focusing on the numbers and they really are, they have a team that's doing it with them and they're all really working as a unit, you know, and they're everybody in the department in all the different departments are understanding what's going on and what areas really need to be improved. And then a plan is made, you know, what's your, your input on that? What you're describing there is I think just a common journey that an accountant or excuse me, that an entrepreneur goes through. Uh, clearly you've got a great idea, a great product or service that you love to bring to market. It's something you enjoy doing. And so with that passion, you work the long hours, you do whatever it takes to be successful, but it's the knowledge of the numbers that turns this hobby, this goal, this interest, this passion that you have into being a business. It's the knowledge of the numbers that allows what you're doing to be profitable. And so at the end of the day, yes, you're busy, you're creative, you're doing things, you're taking care of customers, but you do need to do so profitably or you're going to cease to be in existence. And so what we have to do is accept the fact that at the end of the day, you have to pay attention to the numbers, respect the numbers, understand the numbers. Here's the analogy I'd like to give you. I want you to think of it this way. You can actually think of your business the language of business, it's communicating through accounting as being the way of it saying, I like this, do this more, this helps, this hurts, this is something you need to stop. Don't do that anymore. Stop it. Or it's it's annoying me. Well, it's trying to communicate all this to you and you don't speak accounting. I get it. You don't know the numbers. You don't. This isn't your native language. So you bring in that accountant and that accountant coincidentally speaks accounting. They speak the numbers. It's no different than you know Spanish, but you don't know French. Well, right. somebody somebody said something very intelligent in French, and unless you get somebody to translate it, you're not going to understand it. Well, our language is English. I need to bring in someone that can function as a translator, an interpreter that can help me now understand what this very smart and important person in my life is trying to tell me. All of a sudden, they come in as a translator and they say, by the way, this is what this individual is trying to say. That's no different than your business trying to communicate and yet you're ignoring it. You're not listening to it. You're basically saying not now. Well, stop. What you want to do is be productive and successful. Every successful or every successful uh, uh, athlete has a coach. You're the athlete on the field playing that team sport. You're the team captain as the leader of your team running the business. But you should have a coach on the sideline who has perspective, who has basically an interest in seeing the game from a different view. And when that accountant is able to come in and help that team lead actually make great business decisions on the field, they're going to be far more successful. The coach can't step on the field. The business coach can't make the decisions in the company, but they can make a big difference difference as to how the company is running. It's not their company. You're the team coach You're or the team captain. You're the one making the decisions on the fly, on the field, as the game is being played. But you need to have that coach that can come in and give you some perspective that you're not seeing because you're caught up in the moment. That's what you're doing as a business owner. You're recognizing that although you're the team captain on the field playing the game, you still need someone that you can step off the field and say, hey, am I missing something? Is there something I should be doing differently? And that team coach is going to be able to say, yeah, consider this, do this, run this play, and you're going to be all right. That's right. what we're looking for as business leaders. I love it. I love it. Now, if you had to take today's conversation and you really wanted to like, you know, point out some important aspects of this conversation, what would you like to advise the listeners from everything we talked about? What are some of the things that you think that you really need to emphasize so they understand the importance of today's conversation? The value of a pro forma budget or forecast, basically taking your business model and putting it into an Excel spreadsheet or something that you can use that it, that illustrates, here's what happens as, it, as my business evolves. And it's related to the numbers. Numbers are essential. You do that and have somebody perhaps help you do that. You're going to have greater confidence in your business model because you know, if you just hit these metrics, do these numbers at the end, you will be profitable. If you can... Put those numbers out there and show that you're 
confident in what you're doing, you'll be much more effective. If what you experience is you do this business model and you do your pro forma and with your budget, you realize this is not a profitable business, you'll stop the insanity of trying to do what you're doing, which clearly does not work. And it's both from a cash flow perspective and an accrual perspective. And we can talk about that later. The second thing I'd focus on is once you've identified what those key standard numbers are, you need to then work towards those. And that is on a daily basis. Did you or didn't you do what's essential to start the funnel side of that entire business model? And if your first numbers aren't working, what makes you think the next numbers down the line are going to be effective? You are going to impact everything from those initial numbers. Then the next thing I would say is work with your accounting professional. They are that interpreter, that individual that can help you understand what you're experiencing as it relates to the numbers. And then you're going to be a more informed business owner. The next thing I'd focus on is then doing a, a, a benchmark report, comparing yourself to your competition. You're already comparing yourself with the financial reports to the past you. You're comparing yourself to your present budget and future budget. Now, how do you compare to your competition? Those things are going to be essential, but I would ultimately suggest as we ended, work with a business coach. You need that outside perspective as you're running your company to really apply tr proven business uh, principles in your company so that you can be effective. And the easiest way I would suggest doing this is first going to universalaccounting.com and getting a copy of the book in the black. It's in the free resource section. It's available for free as an ebook. And then also in the free resource section, in the eBooks, get the book, Your Strategic Accountant. Those two books will be very instrumental in helping you run your business by the numbers more intelligently and more profitably. I love it. Now, can you also explain to people those different services that you provide so they understand some of the services that you provide? Because you have a couple of them that you, you provide for, for individuals. Yeah. So we have a division of our company called Universal Business Builder. It's where we actually provide CFO and advisory services as business coaches. We essentially work with business owners and help them implement proven strategies, many of which we've been talking about here today and also in the series that we're putting together. It's these business pr uh, principles that are proven. They are based upon the nine principles to make your business profitable and the eight drivers that basically determine the worth of your company. These two things I think are critical for every business. You're working on an asset is it something that is profitable and is it valuable? So those are the context in which we actually focus. And then with regards to the, the accounting side of things, we're an accounting school. So cl clearly we're working with individuals from an accounting point of view, helping them become effective bookkeepers, what we refer to as uh, professional bookkeepers. These are people that are familiar with the day-to-day -day applications of accounting in small business. We also work with individuals to become professional tax preparers. These are individuals that are proficient with both individual and business returns. And then lastly, that of becoming a profit and growth expert, essentially becoming CFO and advisors for the clients that they're working with. I love it. And you also, you, you have, so you have a whole section of resources that people can go to. So it could help them with all different areas that they need in order to advance and thrive and, and grow in their, in, the, in their business and so forth. Correct. And you can find Correct. all that. Which website can you find that on? Going to universalaccounting.com, you can find in the free resource section a number of things, one of which I will also add is the business score. It's the business score that helps you actually do a SWOT analysis, strengths and opportunities assessment of your company. It's a 15-minute questionnaire. You fill out the uh, questions as it relates to your company, and we'll give you a phenomenal report that tells you essentially what are those eight things that relate to the valuation of your business and how you compare and what things you can do to work on those various sections so that you you can now work intelligently on your business, basically building a company that has greater worth. I love it. I love it. Now, is there anything else that you'd like to say before we close that we didn't cover, but you'd like to um, tell the audience? Certainly. Yeah. There are basically a few things that I think determine people's success in business. Uh, one of the things that I identified early on in my research of successful entrepreneurs is that of passion. They're very passionate. The second is they're very committed. They're also ones that focus on quality, but the last one is knowledge of numbers. And that's what we've been discussing today. They know their numbers. They manage by the numbers. They measure the numbers. They actually compare themselves to the, to their past history. They they compare themselves to their standards as to what it is that they know needs to happen in the business, their pro forma and budgets. 
And then lastly, they do that benchmarking assessment as it relates to their competition. They really want to know how do they compare to the others in their space. When you use these numbers, you make more informed business decisions. You're making intelligent business decisions, and it actually enhances the wisdom upon which you're running your company because that intuition you have, it's valuable, but it's enhanced when you're actually using the numbers. So those are the things that I'd like to emphasize in our conversation today, the importance and value of the numbers. Your company is trying to talk to you. Stop ignoring it. Listen and hear what it's trying to say as to what's working well and what needs to change. I love it. I love it. This has been amazing, Roger. I love having you on the show. You always bring so much knowledge and really you kind of, you know, open people's eyes because, you know, it's very hard when you run a business and you're an entrepreneur. And especially if you're a smaller, middle sized business owner, you have X amount of people working with you. And, you know, you, it's very involved, like, you know, and you know, you spend a lot of hours and sometimes it, you, you can get lost and you could overlook the numbers. So it's really important to emphasize, you know, you know, that the numbers are, are the basis of your success in a business and, you know, and then how to do it. And you went over that really great today. You really emphasized on the different steps, you know, and, you know, from step one to step two to step three, and really gave a great, um, you know, idea for a business owner on how they really need to structure their business and then, and what they really need to focus on in order to grow and thrive and, and excel to the levels that they want to excel to. So, you know, thank you so much for being on the show today and, and sharing all this knowledge. And I look forward to having you back on the show. You are amazing. And I just love having you here because your, your knowledge and expertise in accounting is phenomenal. So thank you so much for coming on the show today. Well, Stacy, my pleasure. And always remember this, if it's about accounting, it is universal. I love it. Yes, it is. Definitely. hundred percent. You have a great day.